Australian Air Force has been around for 100 years in 2021 and so that's a really long time but if we think about what's going to happen in the next 100 years there's going to be a lot of development a lot of things we're going to have to learn and a lot of interesting things we're going to have to ask ourselves about how we're going to fly not just on in the air but how are we going to fly in space so we've come a long way in 100 years we've gone from box planes to prop planes the turbine age with jets and now we're just moving into the space domain and that contested space. So when we're thinking about uh, the future and what it might hold to the shape of planes, our designs, you know, the sky's the limit really. We can get really interesting about the planes that we design because it's not just about folding something that works in the air, it's about folding something that might actually transfer from air to space. And so we think about how are we going to power that plane? How are we going to make that plane work in a you know, low gravity environment. What's, what's going to happen when you throw a paper plane in space is our main question. <laughs> but if we think about this in the context of, you know, what we're doing here today, we want you to think creatively about how you're going to fold something really unique and interesting. We've got a really special plane I think you guys are going to love. It's called the manta ray. Design around something that looks like how a manta ray flies through the water. Very, very interesting, unique and graceful. But this plane also does a lot of acrobatics tricks and it does a lot of things that that are pretty unexpected for a paper plane. It's actually only got four folds this plane, but the first fold is quite tricky. What you need to do is to fold through intersecting corners. And what a good way to do it is on the table here is to roll it towards yourself so that you create a fold that runs through those opposing corners. So once you've got it close, spread your fingers out and make that fold. It doesn't have to be completely accurate, just so long as it's relatively even. It should look a little bit like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that edge, so feel that edge, lean it, and then fold towards yourself about one centimetre, just doing a nice band that runs parallel across the top. So three times in total. So what that's doing is adding weight into the nose, just like all of our planes. That weight helps give it momentum from the front, but also makes that airfoil so it gives the plane lift. So now what we've got to do is shape the plane. And to do this, we have to get on our feet and move to a different location. Now, to do this, I happen to have here a nice multi-million dollar F-111. You can use the back of the chair or an edge of a table to make the same effect. So with the band facing away from you, I want you to roll it, not doing it so much so you start a fire, just shoe shine it to create a nice curved shape in one direction. Now, once you've got to that point, I want you to fold back the edges to make that nice gull wing profile. You might need to do this a few times to get the shape working for you. It should look a little bit like this, making sure that those wing tips are above the centre fuselage and that'll be perfect. So it's ready to go. So just before we throw our planes, it's important to know how to hold your plane. For nice gentle sweeping glides, hold it with one finger and release. Let it fly out of your hand. But for more powerful flicks and more dynamic acrobatics, two fingers and flick it towards the sky. So let's see how this flies now that we know all that. 